So, welcome everybody. This is our monthly uh, DevRel meetup. Uh, and we have a special thanks to say to our, one of our founding sponsors, Contentful.com, who uh, have been great supporters even from the start. Um, this meetup is virtual, and it's virtual to make it more inclusive. Uh, we all enjoy in-person meetups. Uh, there are lots of those. Um, but we decided to make this one virtual because that means that people from all over the world, and our speakers today are from joining us from Germany and England, uh, can speak, and people from all over the world can attend and enjoy the meetup as well. Um, so thank you for joining us and helping to build this community. And thank you also again to Contentful, um, who are an API-first composable content platform. Great, manage and publish content on any digital channel, and they're pretty cool. You should check them out. So you can view the uh, meetup and the discussions uh, without logging in. But if you want to chat, you should log in, and then you can post questions. And our format is usually a 15, 20-minute talk, followed by Q&A for about 10 minutes. Um, and uh, what this meetup is about, if you're joining us for the first time, is developer relations, the practice of developer relations, learning how to be a developer advocate and all of us helping each other to become better, dealing with challenges like measuring and showing value to our organizations, uh, and how do we foster our communities and all that sort of stuff. Uh, OK, so just before we start, the other thanks I want to give is to my co-host, Sinead, who really helps us make helps makes this, this happen. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and also to uh, Vito, vi.to, who provide us with a hosting platform and their CEO, Paul Campbell, is a great supporter as well. OK, so without further ado, we're going to go to our first speaker, uh, Anil. So Anil Krishnashetty is Technical Product Marketing Manager and a front-end dev mentor at Career Foundry and Localize. He's a community builder and prototyper with 13 years of front-end product development experience from companies including SAP and Sapient. He has been speaking and writing about developer experience, usability, and running and facilitating design and tech communities in Berlin for years now. And he has all the tricks and tech hacks, including driving his slides by remote control on his phone, which is a good one. Uh, and he'll invites you to put your questions in during the talk, and he'll mix them in as he goes through. So don't be shy. No need to wait till the end. And he'll wants to hear what you have to say. Anil, if you're ready, share your screen and take it away, please. Yeah, thank you, Richard. And I'm going to share my screen. Uh, just let me know when you can see my screen. Ah, OK, perfect. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for giving this opportunity. And uh, let me start uh, by giving you a quick example about experience. Uh, it was like a few years ago uh, in Berlin. I was uh, caught by a cop uh, because I was traveling with the wrong ticket. And just take a moment, uh, what is this radius fare means to you? I traveled this with this ticket for a couple of times and it was fine. I thought, initially I thought it's just for a short distance, like one or two steps. There's no information on the, on the booth where you pick the tickets. If you're guessing what this radius fare means, it is for kids under 14 years, but there was no information on the booth when I was taking for the ticket. So this is kind of a bad experience, right? And another example, same again in Berlin uh, on, on the streets where there's a, in the COVID time, educating people about what is this social distancing of 1.5 meters looks like. It's hard to measure, but it's kind of a giving them, hey, it's a size of a horse um, or a kind of a size of a three dogs. So uh, I thought it's a really nice way to kind of convey the information uh, without complicated way. And I also felt that uh, a great experience, even though you notice it or not, uh, for, for example, having great support from this uh, Dublin DevRel meetup in terms of hosting, checking it out, supporting all. It's also a nice experience. 
Uh, you don't notice it or notice it. Uh, these are the things which makes me as a speaker a great experience. And uh, I worked uh, at these companies. These are my recent uh, past experience. Uh, Localize, Contentful, and Commerce Tools. I'm going to share some of my learnings uh, working as a technical product manager and also technical product marketing manager, collaborating or working with community, mainly a developer community, how we enabled or enhanced the uh, developer experience of our product offerings. So let's get started with that. I, as I coming from a strong passion for design, I was running several meetups and I was also teaching a lot of prototyping techniques, running some user testing sessions in Berlin in local community. And being a, a technical product manager, I started applying these techniques for developer tools. And you might be wondering like, okay, so what? Uh, what are your learnings were? So for example, in this case, I was working for as a technical product ma uh, manager for a contentful open source design system. And I followed some regular user interview techniques, asked the developers what they require, what is missing in our uh, tool chain, what we should focus on, because it was a major launch. It I was a no, uh, former 36.4 version. So we wanted to really do user research and work and build the things which developers really want. But it turned out that I think what they were saying, and we we're trying to prioritize them, but I kind of realized later, uh, not during this user research phase, but later, what they were, they were not telling me what they're really struggling with, but they were asking me, hey, this could be nice, this could be nice. And this is where apparently I started kind of answering some community questions. Uh, back in the days, uh, Contentful ad, a Slack community group. And I started asking uh, and also answering questions uh, to the community or active developers who are building some apps on top of Contentful offerings. And slowly, I started to build a trust among these developers and also started to realize what we were prioritizing in our new major launch was not aligning with what the developers were struggling. For example, I started doing pair programming session with community developers. I started observing how they are building a simple UI applications on top of a Contentful platform using the Contentful offerings. In this case, it was a Forma 36 design system. I started noticing some patterns which I never discovered during my user interviews. I asked them explicitly. I did several user interviews, but when I start doing this pair programming session with these community developers, I started to understand their tool chain, how they are working, how their workflows are, which they never explicitly talked about. And for example, one, exa one example, um, one of the developer where we invested so much on the documentation, one of the developer who never looked into documentation and he was using a TypeScript types and he was getting all the arguments, checking the what arguments should be passed. And for him, the TypeScript types is a documentation, but we never prioritized when my work based on user research. I could only sense, I could only find this hidden detail as I was doing the pair programming session as a parallel observer with the community developer. So this was one of the major learning. And I would like to quote that uh, this, this quote really felt when I felt like I found out that whatever we are working on a projects which are not aligned, what they're struggling. So uh, this quote really summarizes, if you really wanted to understand developers, uh, you want to know the person's real values, what they really suffer, what they really do, don't listen to their words, observe their action. That's what I did in a pair programming session. That's what I did. I could understand their pain points and needs where we need to fo focus on. And other important learning um, for me is what uh, user experience is not equal to developer experience. I'm not sure how many of people agree. Uh, if you disagree, uh, it's good. Uh, do, do you think do you think the user experience is same as developer experience? Uh, maybe maybe you wanted to say it in the chat. Feel free to say yes or no. Um, just I'm gonna wait for a couple of seconds. Uh, 
If not, I'm going to prove that it's not. It depends on the context. For example, I would like to give you a simple analogy to understand why I'm saying developer experience is not same as user experience. I compare the user experience or the consumer product or the user experience is for the consumers, it's for the users. Whereas we as a developer, we as a builders, developer experience is for the makers. We are as a developers are makers, we build things. It's like a cooks, we are the cooks. We make things paid, uh, we build things. The toolings required for cooks is different from the tools required for the, uh, the audience or the other other visitors who come and have the food and the restaurant. So the same technique, what you're going to apply is not going to work. You need a different kind of a technique. And uh, I'm, I'm looking into example, right? Uh, you might be understanding, okay, you, you gave an example of analogy. Uh, okay, but can you tell me what, what, what why, why you are saying like this on the real example? Let's take an e-commerce checkout, like you, if we are buying from Amazon or any other commerce, right? There is only one way to add to cart and one way to check out. Of course, there are multiple options you can pay, uh, but there is a one known flow. There cannot be 10 different flows. But whereas, let's say you wanted to upload your file or a code to a GitHub. Let's take this as an example. Let's see how different you can do, depending on your experience, depending on what tools you're comfortable. For, for example, you can manually upload your file uh, to GitHub if you want on the github.com on the browser. Or you can also use the terminal command if you're comfortable with the Git commands. Or you can also use the Visual Studio Code, uh, uh, the visual left panel where you can uh, select and commit, write a message, and you can use that uh, GUI tool. Or if you want to use uh, GitHub desktop itself, you can do. So these are the different ways uh, you can upload a simple file to GitHub. And there is a different flow, depending on how experienced, how comfortable you are. For example, if it's a junior or, or a, a very beginner who's not comfortable with Git, they might use this GitHub desktop or Visual Studio code, the left uh, visual way of committing the files. So understanding understanding the workflow, the toolings uh, is, is very crucial. And considering the time, I'm going to skip this part uh, and... Uh, yeah, uh, basically the visuals uh, for developers is, of course, the uh, code editors, the terminal, uh, the APIs, SDKs, and uh, documentation. So how are the experiences with all these uh, interfaces we need to consider? Not just only the API, not just only the documentation. Another, uh, another example uh, I'm trying to think about is like uh, user experience is more like uh, getting a burger from your McDonald or a Burger King, whereas as a developer, we as a maker, we got tools, we got things, we got data, uh, we got instructions. It's about uh, how do we make sure those instructions are clear enough so that our developers, uh, our consumers of our tools, gonna build and make a nice, a great meal. So it's on us providing this great experience. And during that process of uh, reading those uh, uh, recipe or uh, uh, steps, they might get into trouble. They might get into trouble while installing, or it's a simple example with uh, IKEA, right? How do, you, how do you make sure that you help them? You are not there, but how you make sure you help them? And uh, this is an example where this is a typical journey which developers go through when they're trying to consume your tool or, a, or an offering. And how are you make sure that you're enhancing that experience? And I want to give you one last concept about developer efficiency. This is very very important uh, concept. Uh, by um, let's say let's say a simple example. Uh, if we as a developer we build things and we see how the things looks like. Uh, let's say it's on the. Visual Studio Code, you're creating a simple web application, you make changes and you see the results immediately. The feedback loop, the shorter it is, a better. It's a good developer efficiency, right? I can make changes faster, I can see the results. If it takes several minutes, then the experience is not great. That means the efficiency is lower. If the time to build things are faster, then it's a high efficiency. So 
let's think about uh, you're running a big, very uh, monolithic application where you're running a lot of unit tests. If it is taking a lot of time, that means that is a low efficiency. If it if it happens in just a couple of seconds, it's a fast efficiency. There, there's a uh, just think about that analogy I gave about restaurant and the cook, right? We as the cook, we prepare many times this food, uh, depending on how many visitors are visiting the restaurants today. And whereas as a users, they might come and have the meal only once. So this is a big difference. So how can we make the life easy for these cooks? Because they will be running, doing the same things many times, just like developers, we'll be checking it out. There'll be a lot of feedback loop. We'll be checking it out if it's working fine. Well, how do we make sure that we produce high effective environment? Whatever the tool it could be you're working on, is your tool making the life easy for developers or not? So uh, I'm going to skip this considering the time. I'm going to talk about how can we make this, how can we move from low effective environment? How can we make high effective environment where we can really give a great experience and also uh, makes their life uh, nicer? And some of the techniques I want to share using community, how we can enhance this experience. First thing, opening up for feedback. One of the things which uh, got inspired from the um, uh, from the next, okay, I'm gonna talk about the next years. So everybody having a community. So are we open to collect the feedback? Uh, one of the thing which, uh, which happens to your developers is, are you opening a channel uh, to collect the feedback? If you don't provide a feedback channel, they might be stuck in your documentation. They might be stuck in your tutorial. They might not be willing to give you a feedback. So for example, uh, got inspired from the Next.js uh, documentation. It has a, a feedback, just an email and the feedback. Um, so I just followed the same thing uh, at localized developer hub. Uh, we just had a simple Google form and asked uh, e email optional and collected the feedback about this uh, developer hub. And surprisingly, I get uh, regularly feedback from our developers or customer developers who are uh, trying to use our developer documentation. Hey, there is a mistake. There is a there's something wrong here. This link is not working. Uh, this tutorial, it's hard to understand. Can you make this better? So this opening that feedback, a simple form can also help you uh, make better experience of your documentation. And uh, other tip is um, finding participant for your tools, user testing. Okay, it sounds good. You wanted to do a pair programming, you're gonna learn a lot of things. But one of the things I felt hard is how can I get those developers who are ready to share, uh, sit with me for 30 minutes, one hour, do pair programming session with me, uh, show their workflow so that I can understand their pain points. Uh, one is like tech events uh, like this. Uh, it can be a meetup uh, or it can be a conference. You're going where you can talk to people uh, where developers are attending. Uh, ask them. That's a great place to build a relationship with developers when you meet face to face and in the conferences. And uh, for example, this one is from Auth0. Last year they were in Berlin and they were doing their user testing uh, in their event. So they were having a lot of developers on site. So they could able to get developers quickly and get some feedback from their for their tool. Internal community. Uh, this is this is like very very fundamental. Like if you wanted to start a community who don't have a community, start talking to your engineers internally, especially who are in a client facing side, like a solution engineers, solution architects are working. Uh, they, they could be your good ally to give you a feedback and use your tool. Um, so I would start with this internal engineers. So I have many uh, internal engineers. I talk to them regularly uh, just to kind of a coffee chat. Uh, so I I, I, I'm able to get some of their time. And for example, when, I'm, when I have to do some email part of this product marketing, I do a quick rapid test with those, our internal engineers. We just take five minutes, uh, which helped me to optimize those email marketing content uh, tailored towards the developers. Dog footing, and this is more about start using the tool internally, which is related to uh, getting feedback from your internal engineers. 
uh, friction lock technique. Uh, this is the technique used from uh, Stripe and uh, Google, where logging the all the pain points with your tool when the new new employee or a new software engineer joins the team, getting those feedback. For example, uh, logging those feedback and later identifying which is the worth fixing, which is the most important things to fix. This is a, you're gonna get a lot of tons of ideas because those new employees are gonna give you a new fresh perspective on your tool and what is the painful, uh, did they do a stack overflow? Did they look into a uh, GitHub issues or did they Google it? What did they do? What is missing in your documentation? This is a great way to get feedback. And uh, I, for me, what worked well in Contentful is answering questions without even before getting the value from them. Uh, for example, I started reaching out to uh, those community developers, uh, uh, introducing myself. I'm from a product manager from Contentful working on this, but I got a very, very low response. But instead, I started providing them the value first by answering their questions. And later, they become a, a good uh, known face, my trust increased. And when I asked for them to, hey, I need 30 minutes for quick uh, pay programming session, they were ready to uh, work with me. Uh, so start providing value to the community before you expect uh, any, any value out from the community. And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna skip this part uh, from the century. Uh, yeah, position yourself as the same thing. Uh, considering the time, um, I'm trying to move this part. Uh, for example, uh, you can also use uh, tools like Common Room. For example, in a community, you can find only 1% of the active contributors. Uh, like heavy, they contribute heavily, but 9% of them might be commenting out. They might not be contributing heavily, but identifying who is those 1%, they will be ready to share your feedback to your tool is very important. And you can use tools like Common Room uh, to get to identify who is those uh, one person heavy a community contributor or your champion, so you can get maximum auto from this uh, platform. And other tip, what I learned from social media influencers is always start with an engaging conversation. Like for example, instead of just throwing off the ideas, what really worked really well is asking questions. Asking questions will let community members to participate and share their thoughts. That's gonna have more engage, engagement in the community rather than you just share some news. And um, I think I'm gonna skip this part. It's, uh, yeah, if, if you have money, if you have some budget, uh, would be great if you can also use social media, some ads where you can also get your uh, participants for your user testing. I think I'm gonna skip this part. Community advisor is pretty common. Yeah, reward them. Considering the time, I'm just skipping some of the slides. Uh, the last part, uh, the last part is about, okay, I have a participant now. I know the getting the feedback is very, very important, but how can I run my pair programming session in a more efficient way? What is the tool a chain I use? So I'm just wanna share this. Um, for example, I use Calendly. The good thing about Calendly is it gives you uh, 15 minutes uh, before, 15 minutes after buffer for each pair programming session. Um, so that way um, uh, it's help you to prepare for the pair programming session. And after the pair programming session, uh, it's a good 15 minutes to wrap up with my teammates because they also join as a passive observers. They also take a notes and we wrap up um, what are the learnings, do we agree or not? Uh, and based on that, we just put the tickets to back to uh, our JIRA. Uh, for example, I use Zoom. Uh, you can also use other tools, but uh, Zoom provides me a nice interface where uh, the participant can share their screen and I can record, uh, of course, with their consent, uh, using only for the research purpose. And also the good part about Zoom is uh, if they are stuck, uh, there's a nice annotation tool where I can mark it out. Hey, this is the area where I want to explore more. Uh, so it's a, it's a good tool to kind of help uh, when, when I'm doing the pair programming session. And I can also recommend you these two books if you really wanted to 
understand more from you. What are the right questions you need to ask uh, so that you can get maximum out from this usability session or uh, this pair programming session? I really like uh, I really like the the mom test where it, it it gives you some of the techniques to ask open ended questions. And I use a Google Docs uh, to, to give all the detailed steps they have to part, uh, they have to follow and resources, especially uh, those um, credentials, uh, test credentials and uh, links. And I use Gitpod and GitHub. Our test projects are in GitHub and Gitpod, uh, it's an online cloud or development tool where you don't have to worry about what configuration, uh, what system they're using, whether they're using Mac or Windows. It runs on the browser. So you can see, uh, you can skip all those configuration issues. You can get into a uh, testing mode as quickly as possible. It worked really well for, for, for me, both at Localize at uh, Contentful. And um, yeah, uh, this configuration, and uh, that's what I said, uh, it really helped us. And sharing observations. Uh, this was one of the one of the biggest takeaway uh, because um, do, during do, if I do a pair programming session, I understand the pain point. But it was next step is me as a product manager. I have to transfer that to my teammates. It was again taking. I had to convince them. Uh, instead, we are using that after the meeting, the fifteen minutes to do a quick brainstorming, just kind of a observation uh, step where we had a different thoughts, but after having a lot of conversation and agreeing, uh, we will have a same thought. Uh, hey, this is the problem, we need to put it, we need to identify, and uh, we kind of put it, hey, these are the high priority things, we need to fix it. And it will go back to our JIRA board where we can work on. And um, in terms of takeaway from this talk, uh, just be open, open your channel for feedback and find out or, or set up a way you can find participants through community, uh, those steps I followed. Try to provide a value to the community before seeking value and follow the tools I used or any tools I use. Uh, or if you have any suggestions, let me know. Uh, yeah, with that, I'm, <clears throat> I'm finishing my uh, talk, but I'm open for questions. But I know I, I felt that my presentation is long. I wanted to give conscious about time. I kind of didn't check the chat. Uh, apologies for initial agreement that I would answer the chat while talking, uh, but I can take now the questions if it's awesome. okay. Thank you, Anil. That was, uh, wow. Dense with content and loads and loads of really useful techniques and tools. Uh, as host, I'm going to exercise my privilege to ask the first question. And Sinead and Andy, you might jump in afterwards if you have questions, and then we'll go to the chat. So the first question I have for you, Anil, is was actually triggered by your uh, slide talking about a friction log, which is great because it gives a name to something that I've often asked people to do, but I didn't have a name for it. <laughs> Having a name is awesome. Uh, you know, just write down the troubles you had getting started with, with whatever it is. Uh, and the reason it's useful is because we get too close to our products. Do you have any other techniques for getting some distance from our UX or DX so that we can better understand our users and new users, like the friction log? And do you have any, any other um, suggestions? OK, uh, so the question is, is there, apart from the friction log, are there any other techniques which we can use uh, so that we can understand is our DX is great or good enough? Um, so for example, with the case of uh, developer, the, the localized, uh, uh, localized uh, developer hub itself, um, one of the internal challenge was we had is it is good enough. And some of the team members like, no, this is bad. Let's wait, wait for another, uh, another two weeks. Let's try to figure it out. Let's wait for it. Uh, but what we did is instead, hey, we are not the primary consumers. Okay, we we are the builders. But how about asking our engineers uh, to try it out because we are already in an alpha stage, which is good enough. But we are, don't know if kind of we had a hypothesis. And what we did is we created a hypothesis and 
if the developer is able to complete the task. In that, in, in this case, it was a calling a simple API using our developer hub, like a, creating an API token and understanding the, the, the API endpoint and calling and getting the result. And we, we kind of, with running that, uh, it, it was just taking 15 minutes from four engineers. Uh, they were consuming other APIs and they were, they were seeing the, our API documentation for the first time. And we saw the people are struggling. People are struggling to find, and some names were confusing. And this really helped us to sit down, uh, uh, looking into the recording and observation, and we kind of identified, hey, these are the issues which we can just fix it with just changing the label. And we ran again uh, with a totally new developers, new set of developers, and they didn't have any problem. They were able to complete the flow successfully. So uh, having, having that, utilizing the internal engineers who not worked on your tool uh, is also a great way. Uh, and I would also like to include uh, uh, a, a, a tip from a CTO of Stripe Every every launch of Stripe have an internal hackathon. They run a hackathon, and all the engineers, uh, most of the uh, Stripe people, also have their own hobby, uh, hobby e-commerce or a, a business a project, and they test the new Stripe latest feature on their side project, and that way mm -hmm. they give a lot of feedback. Uh, even even before it goes for beta testing uh, outside to those uh, early adapters so this is this is like must must have for the major releases for them and they dedicated hackathon days um for that uh, this is this is again the credit goes and tip uh, is from the CTO of stripe so definitely uh, i think the teams can also consider this uh, to try it out uh, get more uh, dog footing internal testing getting feedback uh, is really, really valuable. That's an awesome, awesome idea. Wow. Okay. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I basically, I basically inspired from the Stripe yeah. way and I, I can try to do the same thing at Localize and it worked really well for us. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to Sinead. Did you have a question for Anil? Yeah. Hi, Neil. Um, brilliant. And thank you. And particularly that list of um, suggested tools and stuff at the end just always so useful and um, you created quite a buzz between Suze and everybody on the chat about the design and is it a separate skill set or is it not or who has responsibility within the team to kind of make sure that design is actually you know um thought about so do you have I, I know your talk was about it but what's your personal opinion would say on on discovering who in the team might actually be a good person to lead um, if this is something new that has to be introduced, if this is a new approach that you're introducing, how do you discover well, who's the right person to actually champion this? And champion Johannes had brought up that in the chat, that that word. But like, have you any feelings on, on how would you even start this in an established team? Oh, okay. Uh, I can give you an example uh, because uh, I started this at Contentful and I had a similar challenge. And it takes extra bit of time because I wanted to, I kind of surprised when I started pair programming session, when I started answering questions for the community, it built me a trust. I think it's about onboarding your team. For example, a uh, lot of my, my front-end developers at my team uh, were very much interested in attending this pair programming session. And I started inviting a couple of our front-end developers, and they were silent observers. And they agreed, they started supporting me. And again, I also started uh, inviting our product designer uh, to this pair programming session. They all started agreeing with my thoughts and why my rationale behind, that's the most important thing. And the one I talked about after the pair programming session, very, very important. Immediately after that, we actually sit together for five, 10 minutes and we jot down, hey, these are the pain point I observed and these are the things we must fix it. And it was very, very easy uh, to convince my product designer and our front-end developer if they attended as a passive uh, participant for the pair programming session. So what I mean by passive is, they have other things to do. If they have time, they can attend. They're optional attendees. So that way I'm not forcing them, 
But whenever I invite my front-end developers and also the product designers, out of 10 times, they were in the, in the pair program session like eight to nine times. Only in some times, they were not able to attend. So this way, it really helped us to kind of uh, speed up the decision-making and prioritizing uh, rather than how to transfer them. I need to convince them. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's, it's like starting step-by-step, step, uh, showing them the insights, uh, there, uh, uh, and also, I started doing this uh, pair programming session. I was recording these sessions. Initially, I asked them to watch my recording. They got excited. Hey, this is so much useful. I never seen how our tools are used in a real application. And that was kind of a moment where, hey, I'm interested. I wanted to attend. Can you please invite me for the next uh, pair programming session? That's how it started. And I think I think it 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 comes to it takes time. But uh, the more insights I share uh, with the team, uh, they were more interested, and we were able to build some better product at the end, which was really useful for our developers. Uh, which... Anil, that's um, so. I think Sinead, you actually managed to summarize all of the questions, <laughs> unless I'm missing something in the chat. Anil, you should look through the chat. I, I might have I might have missed a question on a different topic, but it really okay. kind of centered around this issue. Uh, are you planning to write a book? I would encourage you to write a book. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, we have an encyclopedic knowledge of this stuff. It's like, yeah, I can do this, 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 this. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to share my thoughts on the LinkedIn. I uh, like every day or, or some awesome. like some days. Awesome. So yes, I think uh, if you're interested, uh, you can just follow me or connect me. And also happy to hear others thought about how. Um, and also, uh, last thing, I, 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 I hope I'm not taking a lot of time. A lot of people might think like, hey, I'm not a coder. I cannot really uh, sit in a pair programming session. How can I do? You can do. You can you can invite. Uh, you can do together with your one of the developer and just observe. You can be a, just an observer. You don't have to talk, and you're gonna get tons of tons of insights by just observing them how they use your tools. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much.